Hello again, my brothers and sisters. How are you today? Hope you are doing well. Thank God for His grace for another day. So today we're going to continue with the teachings on my body and fashion. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the grace and the privilege to be called your children. We come before you with boldness, even to give you praise, to learn at your feet. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you help us as we learn your word in Jesus' name. Lord, I submit myself unto you. I resist the devil in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that you fill them with your spirit. Give them wisdom and understanding. Lord, I pray as we learn at your feet, Holy Spirit, teach us and help us to be doers of your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to continue with my body and fashion. Praise the Lord. I loved fashion, as in I loved, I used to love fashion until God rebuked me like, Joy, you love fashion, <laughs> stop, you're making a, a God idol out of fashion, and I thank God, you know, it wasn't easy, but I thank God, now, you know, I'm just good with Jesus, whatever he asks me to do, I do it, praise the Lord, so what is your fashion statement what is my <clears throat> fashion statement what determines my fashion now the word of god determines my fashion that's my fashion statement to look pure holy adorable to god yes to reveal his beauty and his glory praise the lord Let's look at Psalm 22, verses 16 through 18. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierce my hands and feet. I can count my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. This is Jesus. This is a prophecy that David gave about Jesus when he was on the cross, about his death. Jesus wore garments and they removed the garments. They took his garment, the wicked people. They pierced his hand, marked his, pierced his side. Jesus went on the cross naked. With, with marks all over his body. Oh, he, he took a lot of um, a strip of, how would I put it now? Whip upon his body. The Bible said by his stripes, we are healed. He had a lot of marks in the, on his body. They pierced his uh, hands and feet. And they took his garment, they pierced his side. He bore a lot of pain for us on the cross. And he died for our sins. Praise the Lord. He died that we might have life. He went on the cross naked that we might be covered with his glory, with his beauty, with his holiness and righteousness. Psalm 93, 5b says, Holiness adorn your house, O Lord, forever. Holiness adorn your house forever. So Christ's righteousness, holiness, is now our adornment. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us to understand this. So my dressing, is it a blessing or a temptation to others? Does it make my brothers to stumble? Am I dressing like the word? Or I'm dressing like God would dress. Would Jesus dress the way I'm dressing? We don't have to conform. The Bible says we should not conform to the 
a pattern of the world. We shouldn't dress like the people of the world. No, we should not follow the multitude to sin, but let our standard be God's word. Praise the Lord. So is it okay for me as a Christian to make up and to have tattoo on my body? Hmm? Let's look at the scripture. First, look at the scripture we read. Jesus had a lot of markings on, on his body because of the uh, beating, because of the, of the pain, because of the piercing. He has marked on his body. He died because of our sins, not because of his own sin. So we should, that's a, a thought for something we should think on. Yes. Let's look at um, Leviticus 19.28. Should we have tattoo? Le Leviticus 20. <clears throat> Levit Levit Leviticus 19.28 says, You shall not make any cutting in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. You shouldn't have any tattoo on you. No mark. No piercing. So piercing your hair, piercing your nose, piercing your body, it's not biblical. It's not God's will. I pray the Lord will help us. What about makeup? Hmm. Who made up in the Bible? Did Mary make up? Mary, the mother of Jesus, or Sarah Abraham, did she make up? Would Jesus make up if Jesus were, was a female? Deborah? Or let's see who who made up who who did the Bible talks about making up painting our faces. Mm. Let's see from Second Kings, Second Kings nine thirty, verse thirty. Now when Jehu had come to Jezebel, when Jehu had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. And she put paints on her eyes and adorned her head. See, Jezebel heard of it and she put paints on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through the window. Now, who does that? Jehu was a man God asked Elisha to, Elijah to anoint, to, to kill Jezebel, to destroy her because of her witchcraft. Now, it, 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 did, did you go to paint your faces and adorn yourself when the police is coming to your house? But why did she have to paint her face? Because painting is part of our witchcraft's weapon to seduce, you know. Maybe she thought it was going to work on Jehu to seduce him, you know. But thank God because Jehu was not moved. Jehu told the Enoch, throw her down, throw her down. And that was the hand. This is the model. Is this the model you will want to follow? Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Would you like to imitate Jezebel as she paints her, her face? She was a witch. She was a witch practicing divination, sorcery, and all that. Is that the kind of model you want to imitate food for thoughts my brothers and sisters i pray the lord will help us amen what about jewelries what about jewelries i can hear you say and so what's the big deal about that what about jewelry you this conservative over spiritual <laughs> come on i was just kidding now what about jewelry Praise the Lord. Let's look at Genesis 35, verse 2 to 4. All right. Genesis. Yeah, the spirit of Genesis 35, 2 to 4. And Jacob said to his household, 
and to all who were with him, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garment. Wow, change your garment. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the day which I have gone for. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were on their heads. See? And Jacob eat them under the turbid tree, which was by Shechem. Praise the Lord. They were going to Bethel to worship God. God told Jacob, come, let's go to, come to Bethel. It's a place of worship, like a tem temple, a place where, you know, Jacob sought the Lord to worship the Lord. And he's telling his household, change your garment, remove all your gods. All the idols. See? How did Jacob come to know that all these idols, the type of garment they were putting on, was not honoring God, was not uh, pleasing God? God spoke to Jacob, I'm sure. And now Jacob wants his household to worship God acceptably according to the way of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's see also... Exodus 33, Exodus 33, verse 5. Let's see what the Bible has to say about Joeris. Praise the Lord. Um, verse, Exodus 33, verse 5, verse 5. For the Lord has said to Moses, Say to the children of Israel, You are a stiff necked, naked people. I could come up into your midst in one moment and consume you. Now, therefore, take off your ornaments that I may know what to do to you. So the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by Mount Oreb. See? God told them. This this was when after they'd left Egypt. You know that God told them to ask their neighbors in Egypt for gold and silver. And they did. They got all those. But instead of them to wait for God's command, what are we going to do with this gold? They didn't wait for God. They started using the gold to make calf to make idols, images, and they were worshipping that image. They put all the gold all over their bodies, and they used the remaining to make God for themselves. Can you imagine? And God was really angry with them, and God told them, Now, I'm going to deal with you. You better remove all this adornment, all this gold all, all over you, before I know what I'm going to do to you. Because God was really angry with them. Praise the Lord. And so Moses took all those gold from them. They stripped it. And then Moses, we could see Moses broke the gold and make it into powder and the golden calf. And he threw it into water for them to drink. And like, this is your gold. See, it was God who told them, remove all those gold. Some people argue it, oh, but somewhere in Ezekiel, uh, God was saying, oh, I done you with gold, I done you with this, I had done you with a nose ring. Yes, that was an imagery God was making to the nations of Israel. How God took them from desolation while they were in idolatry. And God brought them. He was using an analogy, an imagery to appeal to their senses, you know. But in this uh, instance, you could see that God told them, told Moses, tell them they must remove all the goals, everything, their ornaments on their bodies. Because instead of them waiting for God to give them instruction, what are we going to use these jewelries you asked us to take um, from the Egyptians to do? 
they didn't wait for God. They used it for whatever they, they felt they could use it for. Just like we do today. We worship God in our home. We, we do whatever seems good. Oh, everybody is doing it. Other nations are doing it. So we do it. We need to be careful. Praise the Lord. What about my hair? What about my hair? See, what am I doing to my hair? Some people will use wig, weave on, oh my hair, um, dye, they perm their hair with chemical, with color, they tone their hair. Is God happy with all this? No. It's like contending with God. Isaiah 45, 9 said, Woe to that man who is contending with God. Who, who is saying to, say, can, can, um, you know, the, a mother said to the father, what, what son have you begotten? That's what we are telling God. Why did you quote me this way? I don't like my hair this way. I don't like my nose this way. I don't like my this this way. I'm going to recreate myself. That's what we do. I used to do that too until God began to chastise me. In fact, God told me there are whole lies, all those things we put on our head. You see, and hold people. The Bible said the gray hair is glory for old people, but they want to cover the gray hair. They want to dye their gray hair. It is not pleasing to God. We are The glory that's supposed to be for, for you as an older people, you are covering it up and it's now becoming shame before God. Even though we think, oh, it's fashion, it's okay. And we see so many of our young people, they dye their hair into so many colors. They put wig. And we do a lot of things. They are all lies. Lies. It's not a natural. Anything apart from a natural ear, it is a lie. And in Revelation, God said, all liars will go to hell. Fake eyelashes, fake nails, fake uh, hair, fake um, breast, and fake, name it. They are all lies. Lies. And all liars. The Bible said the devil is father of liars. He lies, and anybody that does lies, that lies will go to hell. In uh, Romans one twenty five, Jesus says um, that the Bible says that they exchange the truth of God for lies. For lies, we shouldn't be doing that, children of God. I pray the Lord will help us. Then, how should I dress as? A child of God, Christian ladies, Christian um, men, Christian women, how should I dress? Let's go to First Timothy. Let's first of all go to Job. Job 22 to 20. Job 22, 24 to 26 says, Then you will lay your gold in the dust. And the gold of offer among the stones of the brook. Lay your gold on the dust. Yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. Amen. Let Jesus be your gold and your silver and your adornment in holiness. Praise the Lord. For then you will have your delight in Almighty. And lift up your face to God. And you'll be able to lift up your face to God with purity in your heart, with purity of, of your body in holiness, and with joy. You'll be able to praise the Lord, and God will be happy with you because God is now your adornment, is your gold, is your silver. Praise the Lord. And also in Revelation, Jesus was telling at one of the church, he said, Revelation 3 18. Jesus said, I cancel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, fire of the word of God, <laughs> that you may be rich and white garment, that you may be clothed, that your shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. My brothers and sisters, we should make God our gold. We should dress up covered our nakedness god doesn't want our nakedness all the cleavages to be shown in fact there was a time god told me all the ladies wearing pants they are naked before him to god it's like they're naked yes when you wear pants that was what god told me 
And when I used to wear all the jewelries, the Lord told me, remove them. Remove them. I will beautify you. The glory of the latter shall surpass the glory of the former. And I was using all that. The Lord rebuked me. And I thank God I obey him. So we don't need all that to look beautiful. No, we don't need all the jewelries, all the tattoo and all that. We just need to worship God in the beauty of his holiness, in purity, in godliness. Can people see God in the way you dress? I pray the Lord will help us. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Pray, study, and see God's face. And I pray the Lord will give us the grace to be obedient to his word. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.